This morning's Mass is offered for the special intentions of health and blessings for family of Drs. Ferda and Ezra Hati Boglu, and grace and blessings for the Vitello family. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend, of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that would, will, rouse them, will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for, I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in the bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. After criticizing and troubling the woman, Mary, who anoints Jesus with a jar of very expensive oil, Judas ends up betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. In the book of Exodus, we come to discover that if a slave was gored to death by an ox, its owner would have to pay the master of the slave 30 pieces of silver as compensation. The small amount of 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave. St. Paul, in urging the Philippian community to imitate Christ's humility, writes this, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Judas tragically looked only to his own interests. Whether it was avarice, disillusionment in discipleship, or that he never intended Jesus to die. All hinted in the Gospels. It is clear that Judas was concerned with his own interests, not the poor or that of others. It was just about him. The tragedy of Judas, though, is at times our own tragedy. Because it's easy to blame Judas for what will come to pass. But in the end, it was my sins, your sins, and the sins of the world that brought it all about. What Judas does is what we ourselves so often do. We hide things from others. The way Judas hid his betrayal from the other disciples. But in the end, there's nothing that can be hidden from God. Jesus, who is the light of the world, brings light to the sin which was hidden in darkness. Amen, I say to you, 
one of you will betray me. He confronts us with our sins, allowing us to face the truth. He himself. But Christ does so with a gaze of mercy and love. As he allows Judas the opportunity, if he so chooses to, to pause, to reflect, and to humbly face the reality of his sin. However, Judas doesn't follow where Christ was seeking to lead him, but rather he continues to take his own way instead of Christ, who is the way. And continuing his own way, Judas finds himself in deep regret, which leads him to follow not the way of humility and mercy, which is found in Christ, but his own way of despair as he takes his own life. On the other side of the coin, as Scott Hahn would say, is that of Peter. Jesus confronts him with the truth of his denial, and Peter weeps, but doesn't despair. Rather, he humbly repents of his sin, allowing Christ to engulf his sin into the ocean of his mercy. My brothers and sisters, as we approach the climax of this Holy Week and relive the sacred Paschal Triduum, let us humbly take refuge in the Lord, who is our help. Let us humbly allow him to confront us in, that, in the truth that he is. For he does so to rescue us and to deliver us from ourselves, from our own ways. May we come to encounter in this Holy Eucharist the loving, and merciful gaze of Christ, who only seeks to share the abundance of his life in the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we remember the passion of Christ during this Holy Week, we turn to the Father to present our prayers to him. For Pope Francis, may God continue to fill his heart with love and his words with wisdom as he leads the church through challenging times. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected leaders, may the passion of Christ inspire them in making good choices for those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who live with painful illnesses, may they experience God's comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us today, may we, with the help of God's grace, continue to grow in faith and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they rejoice in the salvation earned for us by the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For an end of this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. And for those intentions that lie in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as our hearts mourn the pain and suffering of Jesus, we trust that you will hear our prayers. We offer them in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard Blair, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Twenty-Third, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, who take away the, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Now I invite each of you to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Endow us, almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal Mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.